people with us. Now that may just sound like a big jumble of words, but trust me, by the end of this, I will hopefully explain it in a way that you'll understand. So, as throughout this presentation, I'm gonna be using uh, my own creations and projects as analogies for the points I'm making, uh, here are some topics of things that I'm interested in. So one of my biggest fields of interest is soft robotics. And basically, soft robotics is the study of engineering robots, or just complex dynamic structures, out of soft materials. A lot of people are really interested in this field. There are a lot of researchers in it uh, who are looking into this. There are a lot of companies even now who are looking into this. And uh, a lot of them are working on pneumatic soft robots, meaning soft robots that are powered by air. So kind of like inflatables. So here's some of my own research and application in soft robotics. I'm uh, heavily looking into soft robotics for medical purposes. Here's a little device that I've appropriately named the arm bender, as when the tubes in the two-part cuff inflate, it bends the wearer's arm. So this could have a lot of um, potential for use in limited mobility or paralysis or stroke rehabilitation or just general physical therapy. I'm also really uh, interested in using soft robotics in a general robotics standpoint. So here I have a hard robot arm that I've attached a soft robotic gripper to. So as you can see, the little thing at the end of the red piece there inflates in order to more easily grab an object um, by just kind of smushing around it in a way. I'm also uh, quite interested in the idea of making entirely soft robots. Now, this research is a bit more primitive, and I have the little robot you see on the screen here, and the entire part that actually interacts with the environment of this robot is made of a soft silicone rubber. Um, that said, some of the other parts are not soft, such as the control system that I provide air to it with and the tubing. Uh, this could have a lot of applications in like any situation where you can't have something hard or potentially sharp. So, for example, surgery or other similar such applications. My wider field of interest is definitely 3D printing. I have a lot of, most of the, or, or all the stuff I have here is involves 3D printing in some way. Uh, to the right, you see this thing. This is called a Baromian weave. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna be talking about more of this uh, later. There's a lot of really interesting stuff to this. And to the right, you can see uh, two little 3D printed educational toys that I made. Uh, a universal joint that accurately demonstrates how that mechanism works, and a uh, little DNA model. Additionally, I'm also really interested in like biohacking, materials engineering, and other similar fields. So, what's the big idea in all this? Like, how does everything I just talked about tie into this talk? Well, we'll see that, but first, let's ask the big question of this talk, why is the democratization of tools important? Now, in order to answer this question, let's refine it even further and increase our focus a bit more and ask, what is the democratization of tools? What is that term that I used in the last slide? Well, simply put, the democratization of tools is the process by which some form of technology becomes available and accessible to a wider range of people. A great example, which you can see all around the show, is 3D printing. They used to be big machines that were reserved for companies and industrial purposes exclusively. However, the price of the technology of 3D printing dropped and the demand went up, meaning that a massive amount of people got their hands on 3D printers. We had an entire 3D printing village at Maker Fair. If that doesn't show it, I don't know what does. This applies to other examples of advanced manufacturing systems, such as CNC mills and laser cutters, which you can also see around the show. And what happened with these is they used to be industrial machines, and then they were democratized, the key word there, democratized, so that makers and everyday people can have access to them and can use them for their own purposes. A great example of this is the uh, inflatable robot that I showed crawling along, along the screen uh, a few slides ago. Unfortunately, this one popped this morning, um, so I can't show it walking, but if you want to get a closer look at it af after this talk, I welcome you to it. Um, so, I used a 3D printer to make this, in the sense that I 3D printed that those red pieces to the right there. 
Those are the mold in which I pour in the liquid silicone. Now, those parts are quite complex, and it'd be very difficult to make them with any other manufacturing method, whether that be injection molding or vacuum forming or whatever. It'd be very difficult to make those kinds of parts. So, with a 3D printer, because it's democratized and because I have access to it, I was able to make those parts. Now, democratized tools doesn't just refer to physical tools and hardware like 3D printers and mills. It can also refer to software and something digital. So, if you're at Maker Faire, you're probably already somewhat familiar with open source. But to quickly recap, if something's open source, then all the software and source code and plans needed to recreate it are available and free for anybody to use. Here's a great example. So, this is, as I said, a baromium weave. It's a really cool shape in that it's actually three different parts interlaced in each other. And so you can kind of see, I can wiggle it around a bit here. You might be able to see that. Um, and it's, it's those three different parts interwoven in each other. And it's a very complex geometric form. Now, in order to design it for 3D printing, I used a program called OpenSCAD, which is basically a programming CAD software in which you type in code to generate a 3D design. And OpenSCAD, as the name implies, is open source, meaning that all the documentation for it and all the resources for using it are open and free for anyone. Meaning that I could quickly learn how to use the program and quickly make this without having to have extensive knowledge on the topic. Now, even if a piece of software isn't open, let's say, just being free will go a long way. A great example is a program called Fusion 360. It's uh, made by Autodesk, and it's a professional-grade 3D CAD software meant for manually designing um, stuff in a digital environment. However, the thing is, although it's this industrial and professional tool, it's free for any hobbyist to download. Any of you could download it on your computer and use it to make whatever you want. So if you can see in the bottom right corner there, I have this little guy. So what is this? So there's something called the Finray effect, which you can see on the right, where you, if you have a structure like that and apply a force to the side of it, it'll curve around it. Now I created this in one part. The one you see to the right has multiple parts attached by hinges, but this one was made exclusively in one part. Because I had access to that complex design tool, I could make this complex form and alter something that's been done before and give it new life, give it something interesting, and an uh, interesting twist on, as I said, something that's been done before. Now, to, we're going to have um, questions towards the end. I'm sorry, Jeff, now, but But um, I want to I want to hear what Jeff said. Um, so, democratized tools can actually go even further than this, and they can just be ideas and stuff that people share um, that maybe isn't software, maybe isn't a physical thing yet, but is just an idea, knowledge. So, as I uh, kind of like to call them on the internet now, the information superhighway, we have these things that I call uh, knowledge clusters, which are basically forums or websites of uh, concentrated and densely packed knowledge on a specific topic. So examples are like Thingiverse for 3D printing or Hackaday for uh, electronics and uh, programming and whatnot. And as a result, these knowledge clusters are basically infrastructure for anybody who can spread, merge, cultivate ideas, thoughts, and design patterns. And that's a really powerful tool. Here's an example of how I used it. Now, there's a large community on YouTube of 3D printers, 3D printing people who make videos on 3D printing. And uh, one such user by the name of Makers News uh, made a video on using a 3D cubic lattice, which is basically like a cubic structure of tubes in order to save uh, material and printing time. However, when I saw this, I saw this technique and I thought this could be used in making compliant structures, structures that are squishy, that are evenly squishy. Scientific, I know. But, and so as a result, I did what anyone would do, and then I made a bouncy ball. So you can see on this cross section here, it's got that cubic lattice on the inside, and that allows this bouncy ball 
to bounce really um, con uh, consistently and pretty well. And this was made on a 3D printer. So I've shown you what I've made with democratized tools, but like, what's so cool about what I've made with it and what others, other makers have made with it before? Well, specifically with what I've shown uh, here today in my examples, these particular technologies haven't really been used with these particular applications. Here's a great example. So right here, I have a little... Oh, it's cut off there. Huh. Um, whatever. It just says uh, technology and application. But this is a little maraca that I 3D printed. And it has a little cavity on the inside that while it was printing, I stopped it and poured in a bit of rice and then kept printing over it. And as a result, it created this seamless form that has a particular medium on the inside. So it's a working maraca. Now that may not seem like a particularly practical thing as we have maracas, but that same concept can be applied to other use fields. For example, this is a check valve, meaning it only allows air to pass through it in one direction. I 3D printed it by stopping it right at this point and inserting a little piece of rubber. And as a result, it'll only let air pass in this direction. So if you see, the paper moves because the air hit it, except in this direction, no air. And so a few people have been investigating um, putting a physical medium into a 3D print uh, midway, but not that much work has been done in it. So it shows how these technologies haven't been specifically used in these specific applications before. Another example of this is the bouncy ball I have here. So, as I said, it has that internal lattice structure, and that allows it to have controlled flexibility, or basically controlled squishiness and elasticity. And a few people have been investigating this field, such as the researchers that work you see on the right. However, if you see there, they're working with a 2D structure that they've just 3D printed upwards. With a 3D structure like this, I can achieve the same things they're doing of using these flexible structures oriented in a particular way to create a certain movement. However, I can expand it on the broader scale of a 3D structure like this. So whereas they have a hinge that just works with um, like a, a 2D array of little boxes, as you see. With a 3D structure, there's no telling what kind of complex compliant mechanisms could be created. So the reason that makers are the ones doing these extraordinary things with democratized tools is because us makers have this great hunger for knowledge and are willing to explore these novel means um, whether it be of fabrication or design, in order to create what we want to make. So in conclusion, although bouncy balls exist, although maracas exist, because I have democratized tools, whether that be physical hardware, software, or just information, and because I'm a maker, I can make what's never been made before. So uh, I think we're gonna have a short Q and A segment. So if anybody has any, I think it shut off. Just then. Whatever, that's fine. Um, if uh, so, if anybody has any questions, um, please just raise your hand. 